What's happening, everyone? I hope that everyone has had a great weekend gearing up for a very blessed weekend. I'm your host, Zach Shoes, Shoemaker, and I've got a very special guest on here today that you're not going to miss hearing from, and West Coast Elite star player, Nathan Biddle. But big things are coming up on Shoes Views and my show on YouTube called The Breakdown that you're not going to miss. So make sure to go follow my Instagram and Twitter, at Zach Shoemaker, to stay up to date. Now, I say let's jump right into it. I'm blessed to be able to welcome the number 15 ranked player in the ESPN rankings, a five-star and the number two center in the class of 2021, the best player in Oregon, and West Coast Elite and Cradle High star, Nathan Biddle. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, let's jump right in and talk about West Coast Elite. So you just wrapped up another season with him playing. How was that? Uh, it was a great season. Uh, at the end, me and my team pulled together. We made it to the finals. Uh, we lost to Louisiana Elite, which is a tough team. And then mm-hmm. we went to the elimination bracket and then won the elimination bracket. So we ended off kind of on a good note. Um, awesome. And it was great just being able to play with some of the best teammates I could ever have. So it was fun. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Just talk about some of those teammates. I mean, obviously Aiden and all, but what were some of the guys that were great and how was it like playing with Aiden? Um, Aiden is just a great player. I mean, he looks for his teammates first. He's not a selfish point guard. I mean, he can handle the ball, shoot the ball, finish at the rim, and uh, just all that type of stuff. And then just like Lamont Butler, Noel, uh, just my, all my other team. So my whole second mm-hmm. team, we did a great job of sharing the ball. None of us were selfish, and uh, it was great. Absolutely. So why did you originally decide to go play with them? Um... Coach Ryan Silver's program isn't just about, like, basketball. It's also about academics and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, he focuses on academics a lot. So, he'll do academic showcases. So, you have to have, like, a 3.5 or better to be in those or, like, a a 3.0 or something like that to be, like, in those. And he'll give you awards and stuff like that for being, like, a high academic student. Mm -hmm. So, he he focuses on – like helping us be a better person and not so much about basketball, but he does focus on basketball, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I know definitely when I talked to him when he was on before, I mean, he makes it as an emphasis. I mean, obviously he wants to get you guys to college, not just for basketball, but also academics and all that. But, yeah. I mean, being able to put other things like community service and academics all above that in terms of – because a lot of guys, I mean, especially – I mean, obviously you and probably an A will be able to play basketball for the rest of your lives as a job, yeah. but, like, not everyone has that ability. So to be able to have other things and other career paths lined up is obviously huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little more about West Coast Elite and the program built. So what was it like getting to know Nico and Josh and me kind of around them and what it's like being a part of the West Coast Elite in that big branch? Uh, it's great just being able to know players that are playing or about to be playing in college right now. They can tell you how what it's like, what it's going to be like, what you got to get prepared for and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. – um, me, Nico, and Josh have developed a relationship, so we're pretty good friends. I was along with Aiden Mahaney, so we all went to dinner uh, a couple nights when we were in L.A., I think it was. Me, Aiden, Nico, Josh, and Coach Silver. Just getting mm-hmm. to know each other and stuff like that, just hanging out, making friendships, so it's cool. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's huge, especially in, like, the world of basketball today when you look at the NBA. I mean, the amount of guys that keep teaming up and pairing up, I mean, just like they always say, I mean, it's like a brotherhood and a relationship built forever. So, yeah. I mean, being able to have that, I mean, maybe you guys aren't probably going to play a shot in AU anymore, and then maybe college or not, who knows. But, I mean, down the line, the pros and so on, it's yeah. most likely will happen when you guys are either playing with or against each other, which would be awesome. Yeah, it's cool. So. Mm-hmm. What were some of the like, coaches that came together and helped make West Coast Elite happen and some of the guys that helped push you in terms of coaches? Um, I mean, Coach Chris Francis, the coach I had this last year, Mm-hmm. He goes hard on you, but at the end of the day, he's a great coach. Uh, he taught me a lot of things, and he's just, like, a cool guy to be around because he's, he's just, like, a cool guy. Like, not mm-hmm. only basketball, he'll he'll talk to you about, like, anything, favorite NBA team, stuff like that, how's school going, how's home life. So, he's just, he's a great coach. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, let's talk a little more about your AAU career. What are other things when you first started getting involved with AAU and some of the teams you played with leading up to this year and being with West Coast Elite? It was like a Hoop Salem, which is like a couple hours away from home, and a team called Team Fly out of Portland. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they weren't on the circuit or anything, but we traveled like L.A., Washington, stuff like that to play. But Okay, that's awesome. So, now let's get into talking about college and what you're looking forward to there. Um, 
when I'm looking at colleges, I'm looking for a school that, like, I develop a relationship with the coaches and mm-hmm. the school that I know, like, I'll be able to kind of play and also fit, like, that school fit my style of play, like, the way I play, being able to shoot threes, how big I am, being able to finish inside post-ups and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And just a team that I know is going to have, like, a winning culture. Absolutely. So, so far out of all your offers, what are some of your favorite ones? Are the ones that stand out the most to you? Um, Honestly, all of them. Just all of them. I'm extremely grateful and stuff for all of them. So, I mean, mm-hmm. all of them stick out. So, no doubt. So, what was the first offer you got that was always had dreamed of? I mean, Portland was my first offer, the University of Portland. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was walking through the halls at school, just kind of like looking at my phone on Twitter, just going to my next class, and all of a sudden I saw it. And other kids in the hall, like, apparently saw it, too. And people were coming up to me, talking to me about it. And I was actually late to my next period because I had so many kids <laughs> talking to me about it. But mm-hmm. it was an amazing experience. I'll never forget the first time I got that offer. I mean, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And just from, from that point on, I just kept getting more and more and just kept on getting better and stuff like that. So it was, it was, it's, it's a cool experience, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm, absolutely. I mean, I think that moment you get to realize that, all your work is starting to come together and like, you know, your education will be paid for is obviously a dream that you can't really replace. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So talk a little more about like when you get an offer, how does it happen? Do some of the colleges do it differently? Like do you get an email or a text or a call or you just see it online or how does it kind of work? Um, I, I usually get a call from the coaches or coach silver does and he'll post it or something like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. okay. Gotcha. Let's get in and talk about high school now and playing at Crater High. So why did you originally decide to go play for Crater? Um, it's a close school. I think it's 10 minutes away from my house, something like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay. And I've just always had friends to go there. And my senior year – or I'm, I'm in my freshman year. We had mm-hmm. a bunch of seniors, and I knew we'd be really good. I knew that I had a chance to be playing on varsity. So uh, during summer ball, actually, they didn't even know if I was going to play varsity, but they took me up to a Gonzaga team camp. And mm-hmm. while we were there, our other big guy got pink eye, and they put me in, and I went out, and I had, like, 20 points and 10 rebounds or something like that against the team from Washington. And then he got rid of pink eye by the time, like, when we were there, and he started playing again, but I started starting over him. And I think that's when they realized, like, oh, yeah, like, this kid's going to be good for us. We're going to need to mm-hmm. use him. And then that year, we set school records. We set – School records for the playoffs. We won our league. So, like, that year was just incredible to be a part of. Best crater team so far. Until last year, my sophomore year, we, uh, we didn't win league, but we went back up to state. We took third place at state, which was better than any crater team has done in crater history. Okay. So, this year, we have a really good chance of winning state. Um, right now, we're ranked third. Just before, pre- like, preseason stuff, we're ranked third. Mm-hmm. So, it's going to be good. Absolutely. So, were there any other schools you're considering? Uh, mm, I mean, like high schools? Mm-hmm. No, not really. I mean, my coach here is great. So, I mean, he, he we have a team, our whole team this year, we have two seniors, the rest are juniors, and which they these are the kids I've been playing with my whole life. Like, like we used to have an AU, like, city type thing. And mm-hmm. these were all the kids I would play with in them. So, I mean, no, I don't think so. That's awesome. I mean, definitely being able to be in a successful place. I mean, I know a lot of people go to the prep schools or whatnot, but, I mean, being able to stay at a close to your home environment with your friends and all and still get the offers yeah. and what you want is obviously huge, and that's, you can't really replace that. Yeah, and, I mean, my whole family, my grandma and grandpa, I have, like, 20 cousins in town. I mean, it's just, like, I like having all of them go to my game. And I have aunts and uncles that go to my game. Like, it's just like, mm-hmm. I like having that. So, That's awesome. So is your whole family kind of your mom and dad both from Oregon then? Uh, My dad is actually from Medford, which is not that far away from such point. It's maybe, mm-hmm. maybe five minutes. And then, okay. And then my mom's from Klamath Falls, which is like 45 minutes. So they grew up all around. So, mm-hmm. That's awesome. So talk a little bit more about your team and a little bit more about your coach and some of the guys going to help lead the team this year alongside you. Um, my point guard, his name is Jaden Grange. He's a left-handed kid. Uh, he's mm-hmm. 
he has, he's extremely quick. He gets the ball down the floor really fast. He gets to set up in our stuff. And uh, he gets stuff running for us. He can shoot. He's really good at finishing at the rim around big guys. And then we have actually my best friend, one of them, Hunter Chubb, he's our shooting guard. He can shoot mm-hmm. like extremely good. We were up in uh, in Arizona for the Section 7 camp. Mm-hmm. camp. And he went 9 for 9 from the three-point range. Hit, had 27 wow. points, all threes, and he, he just knows how to shoot that thing good. And he can he can dunk too. He's like six foot. He can get up. Okay. So he's good. And then we got uh, another one, Kruger Edwards. He's like six six, really bouncy. Uh, I mean, same thing. Section seven. He went up on some kid. I don't think the kid really knew what he was gonna do, but yeah, he went up, just boomed it on him. I mean, he can jump <laughs> like out of the gym. He can almost get his head to the rim. So, wow. Yeah, and then uh, we have a kid named Braden Ray that's going to be starting, too. He's just our defensive, like, energy guy. Like, he's always the one, like, mm-hmm. picking up point guard full court, locking him down, like, stealing the ball, getting easy layups and stuff like that. So, it's it's going to be good. That's awesome. I mean, obviously, your expectations are probably going to win the state and all. Yeah. That's awesome. Coach Schmierbach, which is my the head coach, mm-hmm. uh, Honestly, he just kind of watches us and lets us play. And when we need, like, a timeout or something, he'll call a timeout, and then he'll set something up. But for most of the time, he usually just chill. Like, he'll let me or a point guard call the plays. And then, I mean, he doesn't, like, he coaches, but, like, not really. Like, he makes subs and stuff like that. But, I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's just there. He says, just go out, have fun, and play, because I know you guys know how to play and stuff like that. So. No doubt. I mean, definitely going to have a coach that has that confidence in you is key. Yeah, he mm-hmm. yeah he's extremely confident in us. Like, like he knows like well well he, well he sets up like this huge game plan thing. So like he'll have all the players that we're playing against. He'll mm-hmm. have our names written next to him. Like who's starting on who, who's doing this, and then he'll have like key key parts to the game. So like he'll write uh, share the ball, lock down defense. Uh, uh, he says inside out, which we got to get a paint touch to shoot a three. So mm-hmm. he just kind of does that and tells us how, like, we need to do that. And then he lets us go out, and we just kind of do that and just kind of win. That's awesome. So this summer, I mean, obviously you've been putting in a lot of work. What's something you've really focused on to make a game to the next level? Getting stronger. Uh, I got mm-hmm. a personal trainer that I started lifting weights with. Okay. Uh, his name's Charlie LaPerry. He's really good. He's kind of helped me in my journey along. So it's good. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. So being a five-star player and one of the top players in the country being number 15, what does that bring along with them? I mean, does it bring confidence, motivation, pressure? I mean, what's some of the things that comes along with being a top player? uh, It definitely brings, like, pressure and stuff like that because you have to perform or else you're getting the Mm -hmm. overrated chance, all the stuff like that. So you have to perform. Yeah. And, I mean, it's cool, but, I mean, it's just – Basically, he's just a living lifestyle, though. So, mm-hmm. he's kind of got to ignore that stuff. I mean, one day you can be number one. The next day you can be number 50. Yeah, so. absolutely. I, mean, I think that's definitely key. I mean, thinking about that, I mean, you never really know. Like you said, I mean, it's not just, I mean, if you say so, like, locked in, like, you're a top player, things could easily change. I mean, offers aren't necessarily 100% guaranteed. But also you think, I mean, injuries and all that stuff. I mean, always putting your best foot forward, I mean, is always going to get you to the next level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about some of the big camps you've been able to attend recently. So the first one, I mean, just recently got back from the Curry camp. What was that like? Oh, that was an amazing experience. Um, mm-hmm. He's one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. I mean, mm-hmm. he he helped us more than anything, teaching us what to do here and there, like, teaching us moves and stuff like that. So it was, it was really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So how do you think you did at the camp? Oh, I did pretty good in the game. I went, mm-hmm. I think I went four, four. Uh, okay. hit a three, and then I had three dunks. I should have shot more, but it was whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so what are some of the guys that stood out to you while at the camp? Uh, My boy, Eddie Lampkin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Definitely. That's my that's my guy. Mhm. And I mean, he's definitely blown up. I mean, I've talked to him a little bit, but I mean, he's just. I mean, I think his nickname Baby Shack is perfect. I mean, he just plays with so much energy and just passion, and has fun with it, while also playing at a very high level. 
Yeah, and if you know him outside the court, he's like the mm-hmm. goofiest kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For sure. So, I mean, being around one of the NBA's best players, Steph Curry, what's some of the things you've taken away from him? Uh, he's, He focused a lot on shooting form and shooting mm-hmm. technique. So, uh, I mean, he taught us, like, keeping on balance and stuff like that, just like how he does in games. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So another big camp you were able to attend was the Top 100 NBA camp. How was that? Uh, that was a cool experience. I mean, we had all the best players in the country there playing with them and competing against them, so it was really fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what's something you taken you took away from that camp? Oh, yeah, we had a bunch of NBA coaches and stuff there and college mm-hmm. scouts watching us, so that was really cool. That's awesome. So what's something that you pride your game in or hide yourself in the most? Uh, I'll be able to shoot the ball for how big I am. Mhm. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's something key, especially in today's game. I mean, being able to be a big man that can space the floor and shoot, while also being able to do everything else, is obviously insane and brings so many of the top players in the NBA. That's what they're able to do. Yeah. Mhm. So, who in your life has been your biggest role model? Um, probably my dad. Mhm. And then, I mean, like, I got all my, like, I have a small friend circle, so. Mm-hmm. That's big time. So, finally, I always like to wrap up and talk about God. How has he helped you the most throughout your career? He got me the way I am. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's how it works. I mean. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think no matter what, it's always good to be able to go back and give him credit. I mean, he's the one that has a path that's special for and unique for every single person, which is always awesome when you're able to discover and find that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's definitely been great having you on today, my guy. And guys, we've got a very special path for you, and I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. No problem. God bless. Coming up next is Shoe Zone. You're not going to miss it because I'm going to hit up some big time things, including the recent signing of Dwight Howard to the LA Lakers, Luke Walden and his investigation results, Dan Gilbert's back at home, Devin Booker and the double team issue, Norman Powell, Tyron Lue, and so much more. All that is coming up next. Trust me, you're not going to miss Shoe Zone. So let's jump right into it. Dwight Howard is now back on the LA Lakers. Huh. Who would have thought that would have happened after the disrupt? An interesting ending to the tenure there when he was with them. Obviously, went out to Houston then, and we know what happened after that. But very interesting, right? So he's back with the LA Lakers. Now, I do have a quick question to pose you guys. Let's say he starts. I'm not sure guaranteeing that's going to happen, but let's say he starts. And let's say they win the championship. Maybe does that trade from before start looking a little bit better? But anyways, I don't know what's going to happen, but... There's a lot of interesting facts to this contract. It's non-guaranteed. One of the very few non-guaranteed contracts in the entire NBA. That being said, what impact does that have? Well, that means that let's say they're going to basically a trial and error. Let's say he goes through preseason and it starts being some chemistry issues, starts being some disrespect issues with him and the coaching staff, him and the LeBron, him and the other players. They can cut him with no cost. So that gives him a huge protection on him. Now, if you remember, if you listened and heard about it, another one of the big players... They, that they worked out with him was Joakim Noah. And Noah did not have a bad workout himself. He was very impressive according to the LA Lakers. That being said, Noah's right there available still. But I do think Dwight Howard's perfect for them. He's going to be a monster. And he's going to be what they need, that physicality. He's got that in- tenacity if he brings it out. Everyone's been saying, I've been saying included, Montrez Harrell might be the reason that the Clippers are able to beat the Lakers. I just think the Lakers are better, but that could happen. And when you look at it, it's because Montrose Harrell has that energy, that bench, and that just intensity, though. That's what Dwight Howard can bring. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Now, former LA Lakers head coach Luke Walton obviously was hired to Sacramento Kings very quickly after the firing. It was a very quick hiring process by the Sacramento Kings. He was then accused of sexual assault. Now, the investigation is now closed, and it has been stated now that there's no sufficient basis to support the sexual assault case. Luke Walton is a free man as of right now. Now, that being said, I don't know exactly what happens. Who knows? There's many instances that this might have been falsely accused, but or it might have been even true. But either way you want to look at it, Luke Wallen is a perfect hiring staff for Sacramento Kings. I'm glad they made the hiring. Glad they did the background investigation now. We'll see what this turns out to be completely. I don't think it's 100% off the hook, but we'll see what goes down. Now, Dan Gilbert 
If you guys remember me talking about this, he had a stroke back in May. He's now back home. He's a Cleveland Cavaliers owner. Wish him the best in recovery. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff behind his name necessarily in the NBA with LeBron, with a lot of guys. But we'll see. Dan Gilbert still is an NBA owner, and he's been a great person. I mean, overall, he's led a successful organization for a while now. Now, Devin Booker and the double team. Now, I'm going to bring this up because I wasn't really planning to. It's not really something I put in shoes zone, but it's something that pretty much every sports show talks about. A lot of different opinions, a lot of different controversies behind this. So what is my take on that? Well, well, here's the thing. If it's a game point, you're the one kicking the other team's butt, and you're going to probably make the shot. Unless you double team it, you're going to go double team them and don't complain. It's a game and they want to win. Of course, it's competition. But here's the thing. If you're being double teamed the entire game, I would be annoyed as heck too. I'm just be honest. What good is that making you? Being able to shoot over two guys, yes, but it's like like Darren Booker said, it's common sense. If if someone's open, you're not past them. I understand it's pick up whatever. Yeah, no. You want to work on your game, you want to work on things you're not gonna be double teamed every single play in the NBA. It just doesn't happen. So of course you want to be able to work on your game. It's not making you any better just passing it out. Ben Burker knows how to pass just fine. So yes, if you're being double teamed the entire game, I'd be upset, I'd be irritated, I'd be frustrated, and I'd make sure to do whatever I can to stop that. But for the game point, I'm sorry, no complaint there. It's what it is. They want to win the game, it's competition, it goes down from there. Tyron Lue is now an assistant head coach for the LA Clippers. He will be the lead assistant head coach, in fact. Big time signing. Now, is it interesting to point out, nothing against the Lakers, but Clippers have once again taken another man of the Lakers, another person from them. Obviously, we know Kawhi Leonard swapped over to the Clippers. Doc Rivers, at the beginning of the offseason, they were trying to pursue him. That didn't go too well. Now, T. Lou, the other head coach that Lakers wanted, is now an assistant coach for the LA Clippers. Very interesting how you look at that stuff off. But it's gonna, it's an excellent hiring. I mean, Tyron Lou, he won an NBA Finals as a head coach. Like, can that get any better for an assistant coach? Like, I like any former head coach can be an assistant coach. Like, obviously, like, they're qualified. But when you're talking about Tyron Lou, an amazing, fabulous, excellent coach, I don't know how long he'll be there because of how great of a coach he is. I think he will get hired soon after. But Absolutely phenomenal hiring. Loved by LA Clippers. They continue to make big time moves and continue to make this this race even more interesting for the playoffs this year. Finally, this is why I do shoes views. And that's for Norman Powell. He decided to get his mom a car. Big props to Norman. I, I mean, that's obviously amazing. I love, love hearing when they buy a home, buy a car, whatever it is, give back. Obviously, that's why I do this. And that's why I want to talk about first and foremost. Because as God always says, give back. Live the life of God. Be the light in this world. That's the stuff that we need to give more and more attention to. So that's how I'm going to wrap up the Shoe Zone today. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. As you guys know, I'm always going to let you guys know some of the stuff you guys might not have heard about. Give my opinion on hot takes and different stuff in Shoe Zone. I'll wrap up every episode. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me here today on Shoes Views episode 35. I hope you guys truly did all enjoy it as much as I did. But I hope you after you guys all have a great weekend. I hope you guys all come back to join me on Monday for a very, very, very special series we're going to kick off with Dream Vision, one of the top club teams, and some of the top players will all be on Shoes Views over the course of the next couple weeks. You're truly not going to want to miss this. It's truly going to be a special one as it kicks off Monday, but one way to stay up to date on that, other future series like the Compton Magic, AZ Compass series, and so much more, and of course my YouTube show, The Breakdown, which I break down some of the top players' mixtapes with that player on YouTube. Go follow me as that shoemaker on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss it. All that being said, please continue to share the brand of Shoes Views, the podcast I want to continue to grow. So please go like, comment, subscribe, whatever it may be to the Shoes Views, the podcast, whatever station or platform you're listening to. Let's continue to spread this movement. All that being said, folks, thank you so much once again for joining me. Have a great weekend. Shoes is out. Everyone go be the light of God and God bless. Mm-hmm.